on Power Talk AM 1460 and FM 101.1. Streaming worldwide on iHeartRadio. Jan Price talks to the movers and shakers in the film business. The Jan Price Show. You're listening to The Jam Price Show, and today my guest is director-writer Aaron Harvey, and we're talking about his brand new movie, Into the Ashes. Welcome to the show, Aaron. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. It's, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. This movie was very interesting. Um, I really, really loved the um, narration at the beginning of the film, mm-hmm. and I would uh, tell the listeners who are going to watch this movie to really pay attention to that intro, because it's very key to the story, and I think sometimes people might not listen to it uh, as closely as they should, because <laughs> it kind of <laughs> tells you a little bit about where we're going to go on this journey. Why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about this movie so they understand what we're talking about, Aaron? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess in a nutshell, you know, the back of the napkin version is that it's a revenge movie about a man who is living a life, a new life in the South, and his past essentially comes back to haunt him, and we see the fallout from that happening. But more importantly, what uh, the movie to me was initially is it's a a film about uh, redemption and rectification and about two men sort of coming to terms with each other over... Over a, a mutual shared tragedy and then in turn it's couched in kind of a genre backdrop so it's, uh, it's a thematic movie with some interesting elements to it. Oh there definitely are some interesting elements to it no question about that <laughs> uh, this, you've really assembled a wonderful cast too I mean they were all really excellent uh, in, in in the movie. Um, you want to talk a little bit about your the lead character and the lead actor Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, Luke Grimes plays the lead uh, in the movie. He is somebody who, so when we put this movie together initially, you know, it's an independent movie, so we don't have a humongous budget. Um, and I thought, you know, who, who could we realistically approach and, and get to do this film with us? And in turn, you know, who's somebody that's kind of interesting right now, but maybe hasn't done this role per se. And so uh, we were, we happened to be dealing with uh, CAA, the agency, and they have a lot of actors, a lot of whom are in the movie. And, and we basically, I went through and looked at some of the clients they represent and saw Luke and I knew him from, I got a hold of Yellowstone, the show he was on the first mm-hmm. season and uh, really liked what he was kind of doing. And so we talked to his agent and he said, hey, let me, see, you know, he probably loved this. Let me send him the script. So he did. And lucky for me, Luke did read it and respond. And, and when I met him, it was interesting because he's, you know, you see him as this kind of glossy, good looking, you know, Hollywood guy who's a Fifty Shades of Grey. The bigger movies that he does are very different than this film. So when I met him, I was kind of blown away because he's just, he's like the character in the movie he's he has a 60 acre farm in ohio that he hunts on when he's not working he's the antithesis of sort of la you know which is great and so we just hit it off right away and he totally understood who the character was and what what i wanted to do with the movie and and uh we got very fortunate that we got him to do the film and he um when you watch the movie i think he he delivered on the character and you know who the character was and really brought something unique to it that i think especially fans of his are going to be you know it's going to be it's going to be a fun reaction to to see what they think about it it really is. And he, you know, he's a, um, you may not know his name so much right now, but you do know his face because he's been in a lot of movies, mm-hmm. as you say. He has quite uh, a great resume. Uh, so I think people will be, as you say, surprised when they, they see him in this role. But he brings, um, he, he brings a vulnerability that even though, you know, this is a revenge movie and it's a thriller, uh, he brings this vulnerability to the character that it, it just makes you sympathize and empathize with him, which is what you want to have happen, I think, with this particular character. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, that was, we, we actually talked a lot about that, about how he kind of carries the weight of everything on his shoulders all the time. And he's got this, there's always this element of him sort of, you know, looking behind him. But, but at the same time, you know, we see that he's made this choice to kind of create this new life for himself and and he's, you know, trying to sort of make the right decisions and, and the right moves as far as he's concerned. And so, uh, you know, we wanted somebody that you could, yeah, you absolutely have to be able to hang on to him as a character and really go with him on his journey and care about his journey. Otherwise, you know, it's it's kind of for naught. And so that was definitely a big, it was important to the casting because there's a lot that's not said in the film, but, you know, 
implicitly that I think is just as important as what's being said. So he, uh, I think he definitely delivered in that front and did a great job. Oh, yes, he did. He really did. As did, um, you know, his, uh, the, his, uh, the character played opposite him, who plays a very, very mm-hmm. evil character. What, um, what's the name of that actor? Was uh, Frank Grillo. Oh, okay. Frank Grillo. Yeah, he was excellent also <laughs> in his role, yeah. too. So it, it, very, very, very good casting uh, all the way around. And uh, so it's fascinating to watch these actors really uh, dig in and you can see that th- they were relishing these roles. They were well written and um, you could see that they were really uh, it, they were totally in it. Yeah, totally 100% in it. So how you wrote this as well as directed it. What inspired you to write this particular story? Uh, the You know, the initial impetus was came from a place of my adoration for movies in the same kind of genre. I'm a you know huge fan of this sort of lonely man archetypal kind of 70s movie that you know, for the most part, tend to be genre films, Rolling Thunder, The Friends of Eddie Coyle, Charlie Varick, um, Taxi Driver. There's just, there's so many movies that I love that are part of this sort of canon of film, but, but all those films, Sam Peck and Paul, all of his movies, they all sort of, they, I think they last and stand the test of time because, you know, it always, again, as with this film, they always start from a place of a theme or idea or like a reflection on society or whatever. There's a, there's a greater purpose than just sort of the sum of their parts. And so uh, I wanted to essentially write a movie or just tell a, a simple story in the same kind of vein as those films and, and infuse it with a little bit, you know, more of like a broad, broader thematic implications. And so it really started from just a love I have of those movies. And I thought, what is that film for me? And what is the story that I could tell and, and tell effectively and kind of contribute to that space in the film world, you know, and, and, uh, I just started, you know, putting the pen on paper and this is what came out, but it was uh, it definitely started from an idea, you know, the idea of the two men coming together and having these sort of diametrically opposed viewpoints and, and, you know, telling the story kind of 50, 50 from each of their perspectives. And then they in turn sort of coalesce at the end and come together. Um, and so, you know, that was the broad framework and, and where the idea came from. And then, when you get into the writing, you know, it just, uh, who knows where that comes from. <laughs> it's kind of, you sort of space, space out and words just appear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You channeled it. You end up channeling it for sure. Yeah. How long did it take you to write the script? Uh, the script, not not out and out too long because, you know, I, I tend to write, I, I don't write these movies really truly from, a uh, uh, place of like what the industry thinks or trying to sell the script. It's more films I write because I want to see them and I want to make them. And so it's the process tends to be a little bit simpler for me and, and, and quicker because, you know, when you have such a love for the thing you're doing and you're not writing it for like the elemental component or, or for it to be a great spec that you're going to sell, you're writing it from, okay, I'm sitting in a dark room right now and I'm watching a screen. What am I seeing on the screen that, you know, that's kind of where, that's sort of how it happens and where it comes from. And so when I actually get into the writing of it, uh, because I get really excited about it, it, it doesn't take long. I write pretty quickly, but this one was probably in a few months. It's not, oh, wow. you know, it's not like a week, but it, I wrote it in a couple months and then I re re, you know, I tweaked it a lot, uh, a lot of little drafts or a lot of uh, minor changes as we went along. And obviously once you get actors involved too, there's a process there and you're talking to them about it and, you know, you kind of filter all the input and uh, and then keep the integrity of the thing that you're making and hopefully it all works. But not not too long, a couple months. Well, that's not, I mean, that's probably really that's quick. For, the, for, for the first, for the first draft. First draft, but that's yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Hey, you wrote that very quickly. Uh, yeah. For sure. How long yeah. did it take after you got the, uh, the script the way you wanted it to shop it around and actually get it produced? Ooh, that's... <laughs> That's always a lot longer. The, um, mm-hmm. Yes, it probably like from the time from the time we actively started pushing it. So I, you know, I, I made a small movie um, in 2016. Let's see, we shot it at the end of 2015, early 2016, with William Fickner before this. And basically, when we were wrapping that movie up in post, I had given the script to the script for Into the Ashes to my producing buddy slash partner uh, Rob Barnum, and he. Uh, in turn sent it to some agents and, and started helping push it around a little bit. So that would have been um, early 
to mid 2016 ish, uh, before we started getting really kind of eyeballs on it, people going, okay, there's, this is kind of interesting what's going on. And, you know, we, we started doing that without financing or anything else in place. We just knew, I think we can get this one off the ground. And so, uh, it made it into the hands of some agents and that's, you know, and then once they started really pushing it, um, I got Luke involved and Luke was probably attached in, in the movie for about a year before we actually shot it. He came on pretty early on and then, we started, you know, filling in the rest of the cast and finding money. And of course that process takes its own time. So there's, there's probably about a, a solid year of working on actually putting it all together before we got to the point of, uh, you know, pre-production and actually shooting the film. Aaron, that's really amazing. I talk to a lot of people on this show yeah. and, uh, you know, we're talking sometimes it's years, 20 years, you know, sometimes to get yeah. projects <laughs> off the ground. I mean, you see projects, you know, you read about it in the trades, you know, uh, just what did I just read the other day? You know, about someone who's been trying to get this movie off the ground for 10, 20 years and, it, and it's got a big star attached yeah. to it, you know, and you're going, well, why did yeah. it take so long yeah. if you've got, you know, Tom Hanks attached to it or whatever. It wasn't Tom Hanks, but, yeah. you know, it was that kind of person. Um, so the fact that you you got this going as quickly as you did um, is really amazing. So uh, it says a lot about yeah, the script, uh, certainly, uh, because, yeah, I guess yeah. It's, a, it's a good script and, and that's what people are, are looking for. Obviously, it, it start, starts with the script. It's always with the script after that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, it, it definitely does. It starts there for sure. 100%. If you don't have a script, you don't have a movie. Uh, even whoever yeah. you may have attached, because we've seen some uh, <laughs> wonderful actors in some miserable things, and even with their great acting talents, yeah. they can't pull it up and make it a better movie, <laughs> unfortunately. But this oh, one, I agree. Yeah. I, I agree. I loved your camera shots, uh, you know, especially in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, so talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that and why you chose to do it that way, because it really brought us into the world of these characters. Yeah, no, no, for sure. I'm, uh, you know, I'm personally, I, I, I've said this before too in other interviews, I think where I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of like the craft of filmmaking. I think that that's sort of dying these days with the advent of, you know, YouTube and everybody can run around and make a movie, which is simultaneously wonderful because the barriers to entry are a lot lower now, which is great. But the, the you know, the magic of movies and what makes them good and what and the appreciation for films has been kind of knocked down a bit in my mind. So I... You know, I always try to focus on like really telling the story effectively from the point of view of like the craft of making the film all the way down to the camera shots, the way we light it, you know, how we stage things, what, you know, the way that we're giving you the audience the information. So we, you know, me and John, my DP, sit around and talk heavily for a long time before we ever go to shoot the movie about, you know, what's, what is the intent? What's the feeling we're trying to parlay? Like, how do we effectively capture that in each moment? And so, uh, you know, I go through and, Again, it's because I write these movies for myself to make. Essentially, I, I kind of have a, a relatively strong idea of the way that I want to make the movie and the shots that I want to get. And so I'll, I'll go through and, you know, shot this out the whole film in my mind. And then, of course, when we get to the locations and we find what we're looking for, we sort of back into that a little bit and amend those shots, you know, for, for the location or for the look or, for, or, again, the feeling, you know, how do we say what we're saying effectively through the camera or through the lens. Uh, but there's a lot, it's, it's been a lot of time discussing, uh, again, the feeling and sort of the overall pastiche of the movie. And then once we get to the point where we're into the minutia of actually literally picking out shots and figuring out how we're doing it, that's kind of, you know, 10 steps down the line already. So it's, there's a lot of work and a lot of thought that goes into it. And then, you know, of course <laughs> you get to set and some days you just throw all that right out the window because you have to be a little more, you know, on the fly, just circumstantially for other reasons. But, um, but we, 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 you know, pay a lot of attention to the composition and, and, you know, creating that feeling and that, that sense of tone and place. And, um, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff goes into that. A lot of, you know, looking at reference photos, again, talking about specific lens choices and framing, you know, and it, it, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> it's very difficult to sort of quantify it in, in one minute, but, um. But yeah, we, we, I appreciate that you pick up on some of that because we do spend a lot of time thinking about really what is the best way to, to, to do this, to say what we're trying to say in each moment. So, 
Well, it, it, it really, it does work. It really worked beautifully. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to the Jam Price Show all about movies. And my guest today is writer, director, Aaron Harvey. And we're talking about his brand new movie, Into the Ashes. Tell me a little bit about the title. Why did you choose that title? Yeah. <laughs> also, yeah, interesting. It was a bit of a, you know, nod to, again, the, the, themes of the film and the idea of this guy going to any lengths to basically, you know, rectify and, and avenge essentially the situation that he has put himself into and has found himself into. And so, you know, he's literally going to go as far as he needs to. He'll burn his whole world down to nothing. You know, he'll go into the ashes completely to to be able to and essentially get his come up and, you know, mm -hmm. get his mm -hmm. and make his penance. And so it's just sort of a reflection of, you know, the, the idea of the movie, I suppose. And then second to that, it sounds kind of cool and that's always good for <laughs> <laughs> the distributors. It <laughs> so. does, it does. <laughs> so I, guess, I guess it worked on a, on two fronts. <laughs> it, it did, it did, because it, it does. You know, it, that's, it, it's always hard. It's always hard, though. But I'm always like, wrestling with what's the title. I can't. I, I'm horrible at picking titles, so <laughs> did you, hopefully it works. Did, it does, but did you go through several different titles before you decided on this one? Uh, there were a couple, I, you know, this was the, it, weirdly, this was the original title. And then I changed it a few times because I wasn't sure. And you sit on it for a bit and then you go, no, that's stupid. And you <laughs> always circle back because generally, you know, your first instinct is always the right instinct right. for the most part. Um, so, uh, but yeah, there was a couple different titles that were, you know, one of us, now I think about it, really goofy. So I won't tell you what they are. Okay. All <laughs> right. You don't want us to it, laugh uh, at you. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Okay. No, no, no. But this one, yeah, this one, this one made the most sense. It kind of, and it, and it didn't undersell. I think the the feeling of the film. That's right. the other thing. You're always worried the title's going to, you know, betray what the movie really is. And so, right, right. I feel like uh, this one's at least in the middle. It, it is. It <laughs> right is. There. It is right there. What do you think the message of your movie is? Message. That's a good question. I mean, I, you know, to be totally frank, I've never, I mean, films should be entertaining, first right, and foremost. I agree. And I, I don't, agree. <laughs> don't wanna, I don't want to, I try not to do too much of like loading up messages. I'm not, I'm not a big, like, let's chase the zeitgeist and, you know, make this reflect the, you know, whatever PC moment is happening in the culture at the time. I'm more of a classicist. I mean, I like to like a, a classical film. Like I want to make a movie that stands up for a long time and sort of has more universal ideas and themes versus like, this is the message I'm trying to give you right now specifically. So, you know, when it, when, when, again, when I wrote it and we made it, it was always from a perspective of, of, you know, the story is the story. It is what it is. There's no, you know, it's not making a grander statement on anything specifically, it's more how are these, you know, within the world that we're framing and creating, how are these characters dealing with and, and imparting sort of, again, the themes and the ideas that we want to get across to the viewer? Because I think that sort of transcends longer and lasts longer, like 20 years from now, people can watch the movie and go, OK, I understand thematically what's going on versus like, well, I don't really get what that movie is because it's, you know, pointing at something at the time. Right. Some movies, I think, can do that really well. And it's important apocalypse now. I mean, you know, that the whole different whole different kind of movie, you know, it's it's talking about war and the damages of war, you know, specifically Vietnam and all that at the time. But we, you know, right now it's this movie specifically for me had no, had no greater, you know, I guess message to impart more that you feel, you understand it thematically and understand kind of what these characters are going through. So you in turn can hang on and maybe there's some reflection on a personal level, you know, for people when they watch it or it's, you know, gives them some sort of catharsis, or, you know, because, you know, that's what they would do. I, I don't know, but there's no, no bigger, it's not, there's nothing broader i think that it's really trying to say it's more you know, let's engage you let's take you on a fun trip for you know an hour and a half and then let's hopefully you can take something away from some of the the themes of the film i guess if that makes sense yes it does make sense and that you lead me right into my next question is what do you want people to take mm -hmm. away after watching this movie uh you know that's kind of kind of a simple answer to the last one for me at least it's because it, it's so subjective i mean films are you know everybody has different points of view on every movie and it's it, they always mean something different different to, to each individual so it, you know I, I i guess just a feeling of you know fulfillment to some degree and, and people watching me going like you know that was fun for me in some whatever that capacity is whether it's like oh i totally understand you know luke's character and i can identify with that and that's you know that to me that's what i would do versus or, or like you know um you know oh I, I i wouldn't have made that choice that's not my thing so much but i really respect and appreciate kind of what we were trying to say with it uh again in terms of theme but i don't um uh, um, uh, but that's, you know, it's tricky. What, how, you know, how do you totally answer that? Because everybody has a different point of view and perspective. And, you know, everybody 
valid to a point, I guess. Yes, <laughs> so. yes, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, I, sort of I'm sorry. What was the last you know thing? what I'm saying? So, yes. Yeah, I, I, I do know what you're tricky. saying. Well, and you, but you deal with so many. You know, you do deal, deal with some complex uh, themes in this movie. So mm-hmm. that, you know, there's, you know, mm-hmm. there, there really is um, a lot of different. Yeah conflicting themes throughout this film. So, yes, there is one right. that you think about. I love the fact, I hope I'm not giving anything away, that you leave it ambiguous. Yes. That the ending is ambiguous. Yeah. Yeah. So we yeah. can decide yes, and conclude so. for ourselves. And I, I I, like that a lot. That it wasn't just tied up in a like, nice little ribbon and bow and, you know, given to us as a package. Um, that we can think, you know, long and hard about it. And again, as I said in the beginning of the show, uh, to remind listeners to really listen to the overall um, narration at the beginning of the film. And then again at the end. Because... Those are deep, deep themes. And uh, what inspired you to yeah. start the film with that and with that? Was that the starting point when you started to write this? Uh, a little bit. It's, it, it came in pretty early on in the script, you know, when I was working through it, because I, you know, sort of realized that by the end, you know, we're, we're kind of watching this film, essentially in the final beat, especially through Frank, uh, the, the father, the sheriff's perspective. And so that narration kind of sprung out of the idea of like, how is he, how does he choose to essentially understand the situation that happened to him personally, because he's such a black and white kind of, you know, law abiding character that then all of a sudden when this tragedy happens and it's personal, all, you know, Mm -hmm. it it kind of shakes his worldview and his perspective. And all of a sudden he now has to deal with it on his, on it, on his level. And so I thought, you know, what would be interesting is to have him almost, almost filter it through the lens of like scripture, because he's probably somebody who, you know, goes to church on Sundays. He lives his life kind of by that credo, but you know, the Bible and the stories in the Bible, a lot of it's so metaphysical that it's kind of this irony and juxtaposition to like people who in real life are so rigid, but then at the same time, look to this book for this inspiration or comfort or whatever. And so I thought, you know, that's a good way that he could kind of understand the situation and the choice that he made or didn't make, you know, is he, he, looks at it through a very familiar story of, of Samson in the Bible and what that means and, and kind of contemplates his choices almost by proxy through this other character. You know what I mean? This sort of, again, metaphysical uh, story or, or, or idea. So I think it's just comfort and understanding for him. And then in turn, yeah, it speaks to sort of what's happening in the movie. And uh, yeah, it, I don't want to give anything away. No, either, but no, no, no. We don't want to give anything away. It def- <laughs> you know, yeah, no, I don't want to spoil too much. But no, that's, no. That's what he's, he's, he's looking at it for. So, yeah. Where can people uh, find Into the Ashes? Uh, it is out tomorrow, actually, in theaters uh, around the country. It's in a number, of, you know, it's in a number of theaters all over the place, and then it's going to be, you know, all over online: iTunes, Amazon, Vudu, Fandango, Google Play. I mean, everywhere: Comcast, uh, um, Xbox, you know, PlayStation will have it. You can get it anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> wow, I love it. You've got it yeah. everywhere. I love it. Into the Ashes, everybody. Look for Into the Ashes. What's next for you, Aaron? Uh, another, I have another film I'm trying to set up now, uh, actually, uh, similar, another takeoff of kind of, again, a, a thematic a genre film, but it's a little bigger, a little more ambitious. It's, it's sort of my contemporary homage to one of my favorite movies, which is Michael Mann's Thief, uh, the first film he made. So it's kind of a, a version of a, a, a story that I've created that lives in kind of the same world or the, the world of those kind of characters. So we'll see. I mean, it's, you know, who knows? <laughs> Maybe this is the last one. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't think but, so. I don't think so. You've got a nice, bright career yeah. ahead of you. Well, thank you, Aaron, so much for being well, on the show. Uh, everyone, please look for Into the Ashes. And I've been uh, pleased to have as my guest, writer-director Aaron Harvey. And I wish you much success on this. Thank you very much, Jen. I appreciate you having me on. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. If you have missed any of our past shows, please go to iHeartRadio's podcast channel where you can find The Jam Price Show all about movies. And you can also go to thejampriceshow.com, the website where we also have the show's archive there. And please check out The Jam Price Show on Facebook book to see what upcoming shows are going to be on and also write any comments on power talk am 1460 and fm 101.1 streaming worldwide on iheart radio jan bright talks to the movers and shakers in the film business the jan bright show 
The Ozio Theater in downtown Monterey is now open every day, showing independent and foreign films. The Ozio Theater has new concession offerings, including beer, wine, hard cider, and their homemade Lush Slush. You can now schedule private event screenings for community charity events, birthdays, anniversaries, or just a fun gathering of friends. For more information, visit the Ozio Theater online at oziotheater.com. 